camera is videotaping properly. And it appears to be in focus and in the right place. And it just moved a little bit. So back at it. Okay. Let's hope this is working. Uh, welcome to Intermediate Speaking Week 6. Uh, our schedule, October 24, that is my Tuesday class, October 30, that is my Monday class, that is when the midterm is coming. So for all of you, that will be two weeks, two classes after you watch this video, it's week 8, October 31. Tuesday, November 6th, Monday, is the quiz. November 7th, Tuesday, November 13th, is the individual presentation. Most of you will, by now, have given me the country for your individual presentation. Some of you have not. Please, the next time you see me in class, in person, give me the country for your individual presentation. This is the schedule coming up. Now note, October 24, 30 is the midterm. The midterm, five minutes, one-on-one. -on -one. The questions that we do at the end of class, including today's class, this video. So this video is important. There will be five questions that will be on the midterm. So this is important. The questions that we do at the end of class, for your self-study, all found on the LMS system, including today. That is the midterm. Now, the midterm, October 24, October 30, Tuesday and Monday. Well, on October 17 and Tuesday, October 23, Monday, the week seven class, so the next class after this, will be midterm practice. And for midterm practice, you will have all 20 questions, and you will work together in pairs, working on practicing the midterm. Also, because the midterm is one-on-one, -on -one, we will have a practice, one-on-one, -on -one, me and you, for every single person in the class. One on one, me and you, just as a practice. The midterm is easy. If you understand what we are doing, it is easy. And if you pay attention in class, and if you practice, and you do this all properly, it is easy. If you don't understand, it can be very hard. So, make sure you understand what we are doing. If you don't understand, ask me. Ask your friend. Look and see what other people are doing. This midterm can be very easy, and I want everyone to do well. That's why next class will be midterm practice. But today we have week six. That midterm practice is week seven. The midterm is week eight. Today is week six. Individual presentation. Most of you have already seen what I'm saying. And I'm not going to say it all again. Presentation is three minutes. 224 to 336. Going too long is just as bad as going too short. Speech, tell me about what country you would like to visit. Most of you already have told me. Great, thank you very much. If you have not, you need to tell me. In person, next class, week seven. These are just ideas, don't just bullet point the answers to these questions. These are just ideas of topics you can talk about in your three minutes. You can't do everything 
about your country in three minutes. These are just ideas. Notes are okay, but no reading. Talking to people, make eye contact, like even now. No one is here, but I'm looking at the camera. Trying to make eye contact with you as you watch on your computer or on your phone. I don't know. Memorizing is good, but sounding like a robot is bad. And like I said, do not just answer the questions I gave. These are only to help you, give you ideas. You can answer some of them. And the bottom, anything else you want to say about the country, it's your presentation. Anything you want about your country. Okay, today we're doing Unit 4, Trends. Well, first of all, what does trend mean? Trend is just the way things are going. The new fashion, the new style. Right? So, what is a modern fashion trend? Modern means new. Fashion, style, trend, the way things are going. So, a modern, my example, remember, this is a midterm question. My example, a modern fashion style is people dyeing their hair. Now, me, I don't dye my hair. I don't have enough. But what color would you dye your hair? Second question. Dyeing your hair, dye your hair. I would dye my hair brown because what little I hair I have is mostly gray. So I would dye it brown like it used to be. That's second question. That's the important part. Because on the midterm, you will have the question. What is a modern fashion trend? The rest of it, you have to do yourself. Answer, that's easy. But then the second question, dye your hair, dye your hair, and the answer. So what color would you dye your hair? A modern fashion style? It should breed a modern fashion trend? That's a mistake. We make mistakes. Mistakes are okay. Mistakes are how you learn, and then you fix your mistake after. So what is a modern fashion trend? A modern fashion trend is people dyeing their hair. Dyeing their hair. What color would you dye your hair? I would dye my hair brown. That's an example. Another example. What is a modern fashion trend? A modern fashion trend is tattoos. What type of tattoo would you get? I would get a tattoo of a dragon. I have a friend who has a very large dragon tattoo on his back. It's too large, actually. I would get a small dragon on my arm or my shoulder. Except I don't have a tattoo because they hurt. Now, my sister and her daughter they have matching tattoos on their feet. Mother-daughter tattoos. Very nice. But for me, it's not for me. It doesn't suit me. It's not my style. A little bit of vocabulary words there. So, let's... You should pause the video and do these for yourself. Answer this for yourself. Do this with your family, with your friends, with your dog, just with yourself. Answer this question, what is a modern fashion trend? And then that second question, what, when, where, who, or how? No why questions and no yes, no questions. Now. I don't like how, excuse me please, I don't like how, because I think it is too hard. But if you want to ask a how question, it's okay. But the easy ones are what, 
when, where, and who. And the really easy ones are when and where. But it's your midterm. All right, pause, work on these yourself. Welcome back. And we're going into the book. Trends for a how we shop and vocabulary. Vocabulary is not very hard today. About approximately. They both mean close to. So I started this lecture at about one o'clock. Not one o'clock, but like 105, 1255, about close to one o'clock. Almost nearly means close to, but lower. So say one o'clock. I would not, and I started at 105. I would not say, oh, I started at almost one o'clock or nearly one o'clock because I'm after one o'clock. But if I started at 12.55, then I could say almost one o'clock or nearly one o'clock because I'm before. I'm close to, but before. About, approximately, or close to, but it can be before or after. Now, exactly means the same. If I started at one o'clock, on the nose, on the button, that would be exactly one o'clock. Same, same. One o'clock. Much, a lot, is a big amount. So like a Ferrari costs a lot of money. More, a higher amount. A Ferrari costs more money than a Hyundai. Less a lower amount, so a Hyundai costs less money than a Ferrari. Increase, make higher. So if you have a C, you want to increase your grade to a B. And decrease is make lower. If you have an A, you do not want to decrease your grade to a B or a C. Trend the direction things are moving. The trend is for more and more people in the world to be learning English. It's the global language. Thousand, and these are numbers. Numbers are hard. Because English numbers and Korean numbers work different. Because English numbers work in groups of three. So thousand, one plus Three zero. So you have one thousand million. One plus six zero. One plus six zero. But you notice it's in groups of three. So I have zero 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 comma zero 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 comma one. It's groups of three. Billion. One plus nine zeros. But zero 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 comma zero 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 comma, zero, 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 comma, one, one billion. And point used to separate numbers that are between zero and one. So here, one and five tenths equals 1.5. So this is a point, we call that point, 1.5. And that's your vocabulary. Now for this next, you need your book. Because there's two graphs on exercise B. Graph number one, online shopping worldwide. Number of online shoppers in billions. 2015, 1.46 billion. 2020, 2.05 billion. So, number of online shoppers increased by 590 million. 590, 590 
zero, 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 zero. 590 million from 2015 to 2020. Graph number two, graph two. Uh, U.S. online grocery shopping. Percentage of people who bought groceries online. So you have 2018, 23.1%. 2020, 52%. So what do I show here? Percentage of online shoppers increased by 28 and 9 tenths percent, or we don't say 28 and 9 tenths, that's technically correct. What we say is 28.9 percent. Percentage points or percent. So that's graphs one and two. And you need to know those even though this is not math class, because the answers to 1, A, B, C, D are graph 1. And the answers to 2, A, B, C are graph 2. But it's simple. It's 50%. You have a 50% chance. So in 2000, 1A, in 2015, or 2015, there were almost 1.5 billion online shoppers, or in 2015, or 2015, there were exactly 1.5 billion online shoppers. Well, the answer, work on these seven, pause, come back. In 2015, there were almost 1.5 billion online shoppers. Near, almost or nearly. It's close, but not all the way there. What is it? There were 1.46 billion, which is less than 1.5 billion. In 2000 B, in 2020, there were approximately 2 billion, 2.05. Now, approximately could be more or less. So you could say approximately 1.5 billion online shoppers for A. But you could not say almost for B because it's more in B. C, this shows an increase in online shopping. There are more people online shopping. And this, and D, we don't know why, but it's a good guess. This may be because online shopping is much more convenient. It's easier, you can do it at home. Two, about percentages. In 2018, about 23% of people bought groceries online in the US. You could say nearly, you could say almost, you could say approximately, because it's close to and it's under 23.1. But well, you can't say exactly, because 23.1 and 23 are not the same. But in B, or in B, in 2020, it increased. It became more. It increased to exactly 52%, because that's what they have on the line, 52%. I find that hard to believe that it's exactly, but I didn't write the book. And C, buying groceries online is becoming, and this is the trend, it is becoming a lot more popular. That is the trend. That is what is happening. That's the way things are moving. All right, that's our vocabulary. Not very hard. Listening. Uh, we have B, and we have C, and we have D. I will play B one time, and then I will play C and D, the one audio for C and D, uh, 
No, I will play B and C two times because C has a little bit of writing. Not much, but a little bit. So for B, it's just yes or no. Allison and her mother are talking. Or two people are talking. What are they buying online? What are they buying online? So if you hear them say it, it's yes. If they don't say it, it's no. That's part B. Part C, listen for numbers, is fill in the blanks for one, two, three. There are two questions. I'll play this two times. Two times, please. Thank you. Just short, 55 seconds. People are spending more and more money shopping online. In China, for example, the average person spent about $1,100 online in one year. In Great Britain, the number was approximately $4,250. Shoppers are buying electronics. They're buying clothing and even furniture. People are buying almost everything online, and the numbers are increasing a lot each year. There is another item that is increasing in online sales, food. Many people are now shopping for groceries online, but some people still prefer to go to the supermarket. They don't like buying their food online. Why? All right, we'll answer that question in a little bit, but I'll play that one more time. People are spending more and more money shopping online. In China, for example, the average person spent about $1,100 online in one year. In Great Britain, the number was approximately $4,250. Shoppers are buying electronics. They're buying clothing and even furniture. People are buying almost everything online, and the numbers are increasing a lot each year. There is another item that is increasing in online sales, food. Many people are now shopping for groceries online but some people still prefer to go to the supermarket. They don't like buying their food online. Why? All right, we'll start here. This is very simple. Yes or no. And for books, no. They don't talk about books. Which, that bothers me, because I don't shop online except for books. I buy books online and music. Music I get streaming online, books and movies and TV online. Books, though, I get the hard copy, the actual book. Clothing, do they talk about clothing? Yes. Electronics, yes. Furniture, yes. They talk about all three of those at the same time. And then groceries, yes in a different section. Do they talk about makeup? No. So that's the easy part, yes or no. Part C, answering these questions. And numbers are hard. I know that. Numbers are hard. Do your best. If you make a mistake, it's okay. Always do your best. I don't care if you make a mistake. As long as you try and you do your best. That's it. So, number one, how much did the average person spend shopping online in China? About $1,000, one, $100. And about means close. How about in Great Britain? Approximately, so close. Four thousand, one, two, three, two hundred fifty dollars. And the last one is not numbers. Yay! What do some people not like to buy online? And that is food. People.
people like to get it there. And we'll find out why for part D. And we have one, two, three, A, B, C, D. So we have one extra, A, B, C, D. Three and four. So one, two, three, A, B, C, D, one extra. I will play this just one time because all it is is matching. There is another item that is increasing in online sales. Food. Many people are now shopping for groceries online, but some people still prefer to go to the supermarket. They don't like buying their food online. Why? These shoppers want their food to be fresh and delicious. Most of them want to see and touch the food before they buy it. They can't do that with online shopping. They also want to choose the food themselves. They don't want a stranger to pick their food for them. Finally, some shoppers like to leave the house. They like to go to a store. They enjoy the experience of shopping. All right, simple enough. Uh, so matching, A, B, C, D, number one, I hope you're doing these as you listen, please. I hope that's what we're here for. Uh, number one, shoppers want fresh food is B. They want to see the food to make sure. Because if you buy a fish online, how do you know if that fish is really good? How long ago was it caught? Huh? You don't know. But if you're there at the store, you can tell. Two, shoppers want to choose their own food. D, they don't want a stranger to do it. A stranger, someone they don't know. And last one, shoppers want to leave their homes. A, they like the experience of shopping. That was the worst thing about COVID. Many bad things about COVID, but I couldn't leave home. You're stuck at home. You could, can't go out. And, you know, I, COVID, I taught in front of an empty classroom. It's not fun. I like people. Oh, well. And that's why I like shopping. And I don't like going to the kiosk and punching it in. I like to talk to people. All right, that's our listening. Uh, speaking, on page 50, we have Jessica and Maria. Now, in the classroom... I have you speak, but you're not here. So I will play the audio, but you try and speak along with it, or pause after you hear and read the parts. Because it's important to get you practicing speaking and reading English out loud. All right? Anyway, uh, I will play the audio for you right now. Jessica and Maria. One minute and three seconds. Hey, Maria, we need to do something about the TV. Yeah, Excuse me. it's not working well. We need to get a new one. I have an idea. My brother is getting a new TV next month. Maybe we can have his old one. That's not a bad idea, but I think we need one right now. Yeah, you're right. Actually, we saw a nice TV at the mall last week. It was really cheap. I'm not sure about that. I think it was about $1,000. That's too expensive. How about buying a new one online? Some of the websites have good deals. I know what you mean, but I want to go to a store. I want to see and test the TV first. Okay, let's go to the mall and find a TV we like. Then we can buy it online. Good idea. Good job reading there by you, I hope, and by our professional readers online. Yay. All right. Uh, again, please.
Try and read this out loud at home, just for the practice of speaking and reading English out loud. It's always good. The more you practice, the better you sound, the better your pronunciation will become, the better your experience, the better your confidence. Try. But now, what time is it? It's grammar time. Page 51, and quantity expressions. And I think you all already know this. All is 100%, everyone. Then you have most, getting not all, but most, a lot. Half is 50%. Some, less than half. And then none is zero percent. Right? So all, 100 percent, and none, zero percent, half, 50. All, or most, a lot, are between 100 percent and 50 percent. Some, between 50 percent and zero percent. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your grammar for section 4A. Now we do have an exercise, exercise D. And I have this on the board or on the screen, but in your book you have here with the green circles. What do you like about online shopping? And speed is 87%. Prices 50%. Ads, 0%. Wow. Customer service, 30%. Between 0 and 50, that's just a hint. One, a convenience, 100%. And variety, 70%. And the example, all people. Well, all means 100%. And in the circle, convenience, 100%. And so the answer is all of, and it's not all of people, it's all of the people like what? They like the convenience, convenience, 100% of online shopping. Now, all of the people, the shoppers, the people again, but for them, it's all of them. It's not all of the them, all of them. All of the people, all of the shoppers, all of the students, all of the handsome professors, only one. All of them. All right? So, we have five more sentences. Sentence number one, we built that. All of the people like the convenience of online shopping. Now, for two, three, four, five, you don't need to say of online shopping. Because we say that in number one. So we can just stop with the speed, the prices, the ads, the customer service, the variety. Although well, variety, they add two more words in the answer book. All right. So stop, pause the video, do these questions. And I know a lot of you won't pause the video. You're just going to keep watching. But here's why you should pause. Because this helps you make a sentence. How to understand making a sentence. Because on the midterm, you need to make sentences. 
This shows you a set. How to build it right from scratch. All right, we're back. So number one, all people, all of the people like the convenience of online shopping. And you don't need of online shopping for the next five. We've already got it. So number two, most shoppers. Well, most of the shoppers. Bang, 87% speed. Most of the shoppers like the speed of online shopping. But you don't need to say that again. We already have it up here. You don't need it again here. Three, remember, it's not the them, it's just them. A lot of them, ooh, 70% variety. Most of, or a lot of them like the variety of items. On a test, I would just say a lot of them like the variety. The variety of items is it. But the circle just says variety. So just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Number four, half. Well, prices, 50%. Half of them. My clicker's not, I think it's the computer. Half of them like the prices. Some, so between zero and 50. Well, customer service, 30%. Some of the people like the customer service. And then them again, none, them, none, zero. Zero percent, ads. None of them like the ads. All right, that's the sentences. And that is all for section 4A. Now we do section 4B, fashion on demand. Start with our vocabulary. Influencer. Oh. A person I don't like. <laughs> No, an influencer, a person who points out fashion trends. They're on Instagram or Twitter. I think Instagram. I don't know. I don't. I'm not on Twitter. I'm not Instagram. I'm too old for that stuff. But Instagram, a person who points out fashion trends, and people follow them and say, "Oh, this person does that. I will do that too." I don't understand. But people make a lot of money as influencers. I don't understand. But I'm old. And it's a new world. Uh, unique. The only one of its type. So every person is unique. You are the only you. Even if you have a twin, your twin is a little bit different. You are unique. Everyone is unique. The only one of you is you. So you are unique. Style, a way of being and looking. Uh, I'm not wearing my suit today. This Friday is usually my day off. Also top of the pile. But my style is usually to wear a tie and a jacket and suit pants. But on the weekends, my style is casual. I wear jeans and a t-shirt or a colorful shirt. My style is very colorful, usually. Brands, companies that sell a product. So Sprite, Chilsung are both brands of cider. Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola are brands. Gucci is a fa is fashion brand. Nike makes uh, running shoes, sneakers. Excuse me, sorry. Uh, my clicker here is 3M, that is the brand. My phone that I'm taping, videoing this, is an iPhone, so it's an Apple brand. 
stylish, looks fashionable. So someone who has a good fashion and always looks good is stylish. Great, very good. Yeah, that's an easy one. Inexpensive, doesn't cost much. I don't make a lot of money, so I like things that are inexpensive. Casual, informal, and comfortable. When I wear my suit, I'm kind of formal. Today, I'm a little bit more casual, but when I go home, I will change into a jeans and a t-shirt. That will be very casual, but very comfortable. Looks good, is attractive. Has the t-shirt, looks good. Suits means that it is right for a person. So, I like to wear very colorful shirts in the summer. And that suits me. My father, he doesn't like that as much. And it, so it wouldn't suit him. And that's okay. We have different styles, we have different personalities. So something that suits me does not necessarily suit him. It's right for me, it's not right for him. What's right for him is not necessarily right for me. Although more and more, I'm finding out that it is right for me. So, that's it. By the way, a style, a way of being and looking, style is how you look, but it's also your personality. Like my style is very loud and, and expressive. Other teachers are more um, quiet and more serious. I like to laugh and joke and everything. That's my style. And it suits me. For other professors, it might not suit them. And that's okay. We all have our different style. Style is who you are and also how you look. All right. We have a reading here with the lowest uh, Opoku, and I will read this. There is no audio for this one. But uh, and there's two questions, only two questions right here. How many people follow influencers? Why do people follow influencers? So I will read what we have here. What's in style? Check with a fashion influencer. Most influencers R, not H, by the way, that's a mistake. R, we all make mistakes, it's okay. I will fix it for my next class. Most influencers are regular people with a unique and interesting style. Millions of people follow influencers on social media to learn about popular clothing brands. I follow Lois Opoku, says one Instagram user, because she's, not she's, the, she's very stylish. She looks great in anything, an expensive jacket or an inexpensive pair of casual jeans. When something looks good on her, it usually suits me too, so I buy it. And then the photo, Lois Opoku is a fashion influencer and blogger living in Berlin, Germany. Thank you very much. Two questions. Question number one. How many people follow influencers? It's right there. And short answers for here. Millions of people. Bing, bang, boom. Right there. Millions of people. Question two. Why do people follow influencers? It's the same sentence. Follow influencers also to learn about popular clothing brands. Why do people follow influencers? to learn about popular clothing brands. It's right there. The same sentence for both answers, one and two. And that's our vocabulary for this page. 
Now the reading on pages 54 and 55. Uh, the facts about fast dance fashion. And uh, we did the speaking on page 50 about the broken TV. There will be a conversation question on page, on the listening test about a broken tape TV. Here we have the reading, which I hope you do read, about fast fashion. There will be a short talk about fast fashion on the listening test with one question. So one about a broken TV and one about fast fashion. A dialogue and a speech or a talk. Now I'm going to play the audio for this and I hope that you will follow along and read along with the audio. You don't have to read aloud this time. But follow along as you read. And don't forget the footnotes at the bottom. I don't know if, they, I doubt if they'll read them, but I would. And there are B and D. B, make predictions. Two questions, one and two. Write down the answers. And then here, Fill in the blanks. There are six questions, but there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blanks. So I will play the audio now, and I hope that you will listen and read along with it, please. It helps. It helps you with reading. You don't have to read this aloud, but just please read along. Two minutes and 45 seconds. The facts about fast fashion. It's really cheap. Designer brands like Gucci or Supreme sell stylish, expensive clothing. Fast fashion brands like Zara and H&M also sell trendy clothes, but for much less. A designer shirt, for example, might cost nearly $1,300. A similar shirt, made of cheaper material, may sell for $13 at a store like H&M. We're buying more. Shopping for stylish clothes is cheaper than ever. It's easier, too. A person can learn about something on social media and then buy it online right away. For these reasons, and because fashion trends change quickly, people now buy almost twice as many clothes as 10 years ago, especially casual items. Because of this, fast fashion companies are also making a lot more clothing. One of the world's most popular clothing items is the cotton t-shirt. People buy almost two billion every year. A lot goes in the garbage. People are buying more clothing and they are throwing away a lot too. In the US alone, Americans put over eight million tons of clothes in the garbage each year because the items are worn or they aren't in style anymore. Many shoppers don't worry about throwing away inexpensive items, but doing this has a cost, experts say. For example, it takes 2,700 liters of water to make one cotton t-shirt, but after a few uses, we throw it away. Also, a lot of fast fashion clothing is made of plastic. This hurts the planet. Luckily, things are changing. Some stores, like Zara and H&M, now take people's used clothes and then resell or recycle them. This way, the items don't go in the garbage. All clothing stores should do these things, says one expert, but for now, 
It's a good start. All right. Now, he did things a little bit different than me. He read it. I missed a word up here. Uh, it's by an odd line right away. My mistake. He makes mistakes. Uh, but, and he did read the title, but he didn't read the footnotes. Uh, trendy. If something is trendy, it is popular or in style. Material. Material is cloth, it is used to make clothes. And uh, worn. If clothing or shoes are worn, they are damaged from use, they may be broken or have holes in them. I also read the photo caption, which he did not. Over $450 billion worth of material is thrown in the garbage every year. Companies in Italy are trying to change this by making designer dresses from recycled clothing. Now, he does not, but I do, and in class I make you read the footnotes and the photo caption. He at least did read the title. Good for him. Now there's two questions to start in B, make predictions. And first question, what is fast fashion? Fast fashion, I'm just going to go over these long answers here. Fast fashion is stylish clothing that follows trends from designers but uses cheaper material. And then number two, in the author's opinion, is fast fashion mostly good or bad for us? And the author doesn't like fast fashion, so in the author's opinion, Fast fashion is mostly bad for us. All right, questions one and two. Now from the reading, what do you have here? Filling in the blanks. A designer shirt might cost $1,300. And in the reading, bing, bang, boom, boom, a designer shirt might cost nearly $1,300. A similar shirt made of cheaper material may sell for $13 at a store like H&M. And what is question two? A similar shirt at H&M may cost $13. Today, people buy almost twice, a little bit of numbers here, as many clothes as 10 years ago. Every year people buy numbers again. Two billion. Two, zero, 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 zero. Cotton t-shirts. Every year Americans throw away eight million. Eight, zero, 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 zero. Six zeros. Two billion, two plus nine zeros. Eight million, eight plus six zeros. Tons of clothes. You need 2,000, one, two, three, 700 liters of water to make one, excuse me, cotton t shirt. So that was all numbers, but they're all, all of those numbers. So you can easily see those numbers from the reading. Okay, uh, page 55, or 56, sorry. Listening, A, make predictions. And here, what do you hear? So this is A, B, and D. And I will play this two times. A, fill in the blanks right here. From what do you hear? B, Carla is telling Max about an online service. The service, and then A, B, or C, one of them. And then D, infirmity, 
The site has casual, formal, both casual and formal clothes. Pick one. Number two, Carla gets new items every two weeks or Carla gets new items every two months. Pick one. So I will play this two times. Shopper chooses the clothes and shoes, not you? Right. Then you get the items in the mail. The things in the box are a surprise. It's fun. How often do you get things? I get a box with new clothes every two months. But some people get things every two weeks. Sounds great. Maybe I should try it. You ought to. It saves a lot of time. And it's fun. So it's for guys, too? Yeah, definitely. Is it expensive? Not really. You only pay for the clothes you want to keep. If something doesn't suit you, you return it. But I almost always get things that are stylish and look great on me. And some of the items are really unique, too. Things you never see in a store. So when does your next box come? It had better come soon. I have a job interview next week, and I need something new. All right, so you're filling in the blanks for that. Got put there, no, no one in the room. And I'll play it one more time, but remember part uh, B, A, B, or C, and then part D, one, two, three, four, five, circle the correct thing. One more time. Hey, I like your shirt. You look great in it. Oh, thanks. It's new. Where did you get it? I use this website. Look, it's here on my phone. The site helps you choose clothes. Hmm, Maybe cool. Easy. How does it work? Circle what well, I see. Yes. first, you answer questions about your size and your favorite styles. You know, are you more of a casual person or do you like to get dressed up? Then what? A personal shopper chooses clothes and shoes for you. The personal shopper chooses the clothes and shoes, not you? Right. Then you get the items in the mail. The things in the box are a surprise. It's fun. How often do you get things? I get a box with new clothes every two months. But some people get things every two weeks. Sounds great. Maybe I should try it. You ought to. It saves a lot of time, and it's fun. So it's for guys, too? Yeah, definitely. Is it expensive? Not really. You only pay for the clothes you want to keep. If something doesn't suit you, you return it. But I almost always get things that are stylish and look great on me. And some of the items are really unique, too. Things you never see in a store. So when does your next box come? It had better come soon. I have a job interview next week, and I need something new. All right. Um, that sounds fun, actually. Okay, we start off with filling in the blanks from that, and uh, from the pictures at the start, you answer questions about Size, how big are you? Like, I need big clothes. And your favorite styles. We do have colors we like. Do you want it to be bold or do you want it to be quiet? A personal shopper chooses items. I would love to have a personal shopper, but it costs money. You get items in the mail, okay? You 
paid for the clothes. But if something doesn't suit you, you return it. You don't pay for it if it doesn't suit you. If it's not right for you, you return it. And you don't pay. All right. Uh, part B, there's only one question here. Carla is telling Max about an online service. The service, what, A, B, or C? And I hope you're doing all of this as we listen along. Well, this one is B, sends clothes to you. And then five questions. Number one, the site has casual, formal, both casual and formal. Both casual and formal clothes. Carly gets new items every two months, although some people every two weeks, but she every two months. The service is for both men and women, so I can use it too. In Carly's opinion, the service is inexpensive, so it's not expensive. I like that. And Carly is, well, does she sound happy or unhappy? Carly is mostly happy with the service. She likes it. To be honest, it sounds like I hate shopping. So it sounds like I would like it too. Because I do like unique clothing. That's, so that's, I'm interested. And page 57 is grammar again. It's double grammar. Man, you guys are lucky. And uh, advice was could, should, ought to, and had better. So positive, when you're selling something, you should do this. This is a good idea. You could do this. You should do this. You ought to do this. You had better do this. Now, had better is more forceful than could. So you're getting more and more forceful to give advice. So example, you could, you should, you ought to, you do better, you had better, study for the midterm. Negative, shouldn't, ought not to or oughtn't, had better not. But you don't say could not if it's negative. But here, the example, you shouldn't, you ought not to or you oughtn't, and you do better not or you had better not, drink soju. You know who I'm talking to. The night before the midterm. So for negative advice, things you should not do that are bad ideas, there's no could. Everything else is the same except that you add not. Uh, now this is self-study. I don't do homework, but it's self-study. Global Voices on page 59. You watch the video. And part B is uh, does the reporter, Amanda Costco, ask these questions? So what is rental fashion? Yes, she asks that question. So we're not looking for the answer to the question. Does she ask it? Do you hear this question? Yes or no? That's all. Very simple. Yes or no? Do you hear this question? How does fat rental fashion work? Yes. Why would a customer rent clothes instead of buying them? Yes, she does. And well, I'm not going to go over this. This is your self-study. This is self-study. So yes or no, does she ask these questions? The answers are here on the LMS system. And then there's matching. Uh, numbers, number the steps, sorry. Put these in order. What happens first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, which is last. And again, the answers are on the LMS system, so you can self-study. But this is the important self-study, because this is the midterm. 
All five questions are on the midterm. Question one, we did at the beginning. What is a modern fashion trend? A modern, modern fashion trend is boys wearing earrings. Well, I'm a boy. So earrings, earrings. How many earrings do you have? I don't have any earrings. I have two earrings. I have three earrings. What should you do if you want a good job? You should dress well if you want a good job. What should you wear? You should wear a suit and a tie if you're a man. If you're a woman, you should wear a professional dress. What ought you not do when you meet your boyfriends or girlfriends, parents? You ought not drink a lot of soju when you meet your girlfriends or boyfriends, parents. What should you do when you meet them? You should be polite. What are the modern trends that you do not like? A modern trend that I do not like is influencers. What is a modern trend that you do like? A modern trend that I do like is social media. Some people don't like social media, I do. And where should you go when you can't study at home? You should go to a coffee shop when you can't study at home. When do you study? I study in the evening. Simple, simple question. Keep that second question easy. Keep your answers simple. The question simple and the answer simple. Work on these five questions. Practice with your friends. Practice with your family. Practice with your dog. Practice by yourself. These five questions are important. These five questions will be on the midterm. All right. Now next week, next class for all of you, we will be doing midterm practice in the classroom. So it's very important that you be here. I want you all to do well on the midterm. And the midterm is easy if you understand question answer, second follow-up question, answer, one-on-one. -on -one. So next week you will work in with a partner working on the questions and also I will with every single student work one-on-one -on -one to make sure that you are ready for the midterm. All right, that is it for today. Thank you very much if you are still with me. I know this is a long time to be watching a video. It's a long time to re be recording a video too. Uh, I don't like talking in an empty room, but here I am. All right, thank you very much, and uh, have a good rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.